You're now watching a clip from the Mark West Sports Podcast. All right, let's jump into it. It's the Mark West Sports Podcast. I'm Marcus Benjamin, live from ATL, Shotty. He's West Pierre, holding it down in the 305. And we will give you that real sports talk and let you know how we feel about, you know, sports in general and coming to coming to you from a from a day county perspective though mm -hmm. and it's officially football season we are like in full swing bruh i'm busy as hell um i, I could tell how busy how busy i am because my voice is kind of actually sounding weird now, that, now that <laughs> <to it. laughs> but um but yeah uh college football first first saturday and i just want to talk about why i'm here and it's the Bama Miami game, you know. I already see the side you representing, Wes. Yeah, no surprise know. there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you already see what side I'm representing too. You mm -hmm. already know. Mm -hmm. So, um, I want to talk about this game though, and and just you know, like, because it feels like to me, it's it's like a Super Bowl. You know, it feels <laughs> yeah, like yeah, if it we is. win this game, it's almost like we want a ring. You oh know? yeah, definitely. If we beat Alabama first game. This would be really significant for, for recruiting, just, just the way the world looks at us. People are going to think we're relevant again. Um, but I just want them to keep it close. Me too. I just want this game to be close. If they can keep it in within the spread, that's a win for anybody who bet Miami <laughs> and a win for, for the fan base and the program as well. I think the spread is around 18 points which is somewhat disrespectful, <laughs> yep. mm -hmm. but if they, that means uh, they think that Alabama right now at this point is three touchdowns, close to three touchdowns better than the Hurricanes. And I, if they can make it to two touchdowns and not, not it be like some back door touchdowns either, then, then Miami's going to gain the respect that they deserve. Yeah, definitely. Like, I'm looking at it, you know, everybody's, you know, throwing shade and throwing salt at Miami. Like, we think that we're back. But people got to understand, like, um, we were the, the, the pinnacle of sports, you feel me, when it came to college football, you feel me? Like I said and alluded to in the last podcast, I was like, they sacrificed the University of Miami to build up these other um, schools. That's the Alabamas, the Ohio States, and certain things like that. So if we could go ahead and keep it close, like Marcus said, um, if – like, I think I said, if it could be 10 points, 14 points, reasonable, you know, that's a win for me. Again, like what Marcus, you um, just stated, like, yo, um, recruiting wise, we, you know, the last few years we, we generated like some of the guys that, that, that normally will go to these bigger schools, you know, um, stayed, you know, um, with the left tackle, with the safeties that stayed in Miami. So I'm, and not just that, but, but, um, um, Williams, Avante Williams, he, he's, He's actually right. back. You feel me? We thought that he was actually dismissed right. from the program, you know, and mm -hmm. he's back, you know, and that's why I really deal with um, Manny Diaz. You feel me? Like Mark Rick would have got rid of him. Just like um, Bruce, what's his name? Um, um, when he Bruce. posted, yeah, we, we needed yeah. Sam Bruce. You, it, like that's the type of guys that we need, the dogs, you know, the people that, 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 that look like they bought that life. You know what I'm saying? And Mark Rick, you wind up getting rid of him. So just the plain fact that we could go ahead and and keep players like this, we're not going to let go four or five star players and let somebody else go ahead and get them. So um, me personally, we got um, De'Aaron King came back. He looks perfectly fine. When I spoke to Marcus previously off camera, you know, um, he said that he looks perfectly fine when he was training. Right. When he was training, you know, I've seen a few highlights on the bleach report and other um avenues where i get my 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 information from and you know i'm gonna go on the word of marcus you know i heard it from the bleach report and everywhere else but marcus be at my crib so you know i'm gonna listen to what you're saying he looks the part Definitely. not just that we we you know you told me that that couch you know is 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 is, is i think probably not starting probably second second corner on um, with that 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 corner that that it's um, starting He's starting. All right. So perfect. So, so um, 
Blades, he went down on the depth chart, which is a good thing. You know, your name doesn't mean anything no more. That was your parents that 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 made that name, and it's time for you to go ahead and move on. Just like, same like Walter Payton's son when he played for the University of Miami. Like, yo, like, yeah, you got your dad, yeah, but yeah, you're not yeah. your dad, you know? So, so um, for <laughs> me, if we could go ahead and, like, have this, like, a 35, 21, 24 game, for me, it's a win, you know, and, 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 you know, what's better than beating Alabama? Not only the University of Miami um, players and fan base going to be happy, the Dolphins fan base is going to be happy also because we still didn't forget what you did to us uh, and said that, oh, I would not be coaching Alabama oh. and you're in Alabama. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah. so it's a, it, for me, it's, it, it's like a, a, a two win for me if we actually win. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I do want to speak on that Avante Williams stuff. I mean, yeah, Avante Williams was in a domestic violence situation with a allegedly. Yeah, allegedly because the charges were dropped. And that's exactly. the only reason why we are letting him back into the program. As far as I know, they are going to, my bad, I had that alarm. It's all good. <laughs> Uh, just in case I fell asleep. <laughs> <And then wake up. laughs> um, but yeah, uh, he is going to not play for the first half of the season. Mm -hmm. So they're giving him basically a suspension just for, you know, putting his name in a situation like that. Because they know he did it. A program. Was that? Because they know he did it. I'm like, I'm just being real. <laughs> like, 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 I'm being real. It's just, it, it's just, uh, um, like, what's that guy from Three Six Mafia when he was having an interview and he said, Pooh Shiesty did it. Like, this is like what I'm <laughs> saying. Like, we know you did it, but your baby mama knows, like, yo, this is your meal ticket. You want to go ahead and ruin my career? You're going to ruin your life. You're going to ruin the, the, your kid's life. Because at the end of the day, who do you want? Somebody in the NFL? Or do you, and not just that, I don't even need to be in the NFL. I, NIL is right now, I, you got people from Alabama, Ohio State sign these $1.5 million deals, you know, to sign autographs and stuff like that. Like, yo, I could be the same thing. You feel me? So you yeah. need to suck that up. You know, like, you know, it's over. You know, I, I, but, but, but again, milk my money when I make it. Don't, don't, don't stop me from making it because you're just hurting yourself. And not just uh, um, not just that. The most important thing, you're hurting your baby, you know. Because yeah. look, I, I know a lot of people that hate their baby mamas, but their kids be straight. You know what I'm saying? So hey, it is what it is. I know that she's taking one for the team. You know, um, she should have left the crib when she when he told her to leave the crib. And and it is what it is. We don't condone domestic violence over here, but we do know that when it comes to relationships, like you never know what's going to go ahead and happen. It's a thin line between love and hate, like the movie. Um, thank God nobody died. Thank God the baby was safe. Um, and, and, and yeah, they could both can go ahead and all three of them can go ahead and move on with their lives in a positive note. Yeah, I was kind of surprised that it that it that it happened. As far as them bringing him back, they already said he was suspended and, uh, for the team indefinitely, which means usually never coming back to the team. So this is kind of the first time I've really seen the Hurricanes in particular take back a player. Because I remember, like, I don't remember the, the player's name, but I remember a couple of years ago they let some players go with a similar situation. Um, but, you know, this is Avante Williams, though. I think, you know, the fact that he's a great player, um, hasn't really played yet, and is already showing just in the practice field what kind of level player he can be. This is a player that can be an NFL type of safety. And to have that depth later in the season is going to be big. It's going to be big because, you know, injuries happen. So say if we lose, say if Bubba Bolden goes down, he, Bubba Bolden get, did get injured last year. So if he goes down, then you have Avante Williams that can step in, you know, in the second half of the season and add that depth to the safety uh, position. Because you got you got players back there that are playing well, like Cameron Kitchens, who's like the freshman coming in, James Williams also making plays as well from as far as I see and as far as I know. And then you got the veteran safeties as, um, you know, Mari Carter and that are going to help with depth concerns. And penalties. So, <laughs> let's hope not he, he you know <laughs> from what he said in in uh 
in camp. He's been working on that, and hopefully we won't see so many targeting uh, penalties. But I did see some football this week, and they are calling that that targeting. So it's happening. So if, if you are anywhere near, near the crown of the helmet, they will be calling it. So I hope, hopefully he doesn't have those type of penalties. What I also did see is that Virginia Tech beat North Carolina last night. I don't know if you've seen that, Wes. So uh, that, that, that plays a part. part. Yeah, that plays a part in the Coastal Division. And I think it's ours for the taking. It's ours for the taking to win the division because the teams that you got to worry about really are just Virginia Tech and North Carolina. And from what I seen last night, Virginia Tech, they look okay, but they don't look like you know, world beaters at all. We'll see what Clemson does tonight against Georgia, um, you know, for potential of maybe even winning the conference. But I'm excited, man. I'm excited just to see the Canes on a big stage again. I'm not a fan of these big games first game. You know, this is like maybe the third time in the last four years that you had this huge game against a, a, a really tough opponent, an SEC opponent. You know, we played LSU, we played Florida in this first game. Of the season. No, not really. for, uh, oh, so I don't want this to really kind of hurt the confidence of the Hurricanes going forward. Hopefully they can, you know, win or lose. I want them to learn from this experience. And if they do win, I want to make sure that this is just not one win. Don't go, don't go to the next game. Appalachian State, I saw them for a few seconds and they look pretty good. Don't, don't, don't lay an egg against them. I saw Michigan State last night. They look pretty good too. Don't lay an egg against them because those are like the your first three games. Michigan State, you got Appalachian State, and then and then you kind of run through the uh, the AC schedule, ACC schedule after that. So win or lose, you just gotta have that mental fortitude to either get over the loss because a lot of times when the Hurricanes lose, what we've we seen when they lose. They're just like, oh, we can't go to a bowl game. So you can tell like they, they're not really into it as much. So you don't want to see that because obviously if you lose Alabama, you're, you're pretty much kind of out of the um, championship, probably the championship race or, or the, uh, the, the playoffs. Um, you know, you still could probably run the table. And if you beat, beat Clemson, then, yeah, you have another chance because if you lost to Alabama, I mean, you lost to Alabama, everybody loses to Alabama. So I just want to see a good showing from the team. Um, the Avante Williams uh, situation is, is, a, is a good situation for the team because of depth uh, concerns. And as far as the depth chart, that came out this week. So I wrote a little something about it on, on Instagram, just kind of giving my, my quick takes on everything. On the Benjamin Report. On the Benjamin Report, hashtag Benjamin Report, footballhotbed.com for all the latest and greatest. But what was telling for me was, you know, like you said, Al Blades drop into like third on this depth chart, but not surprising because Tyreek Stevenson is a dog. He's always been better than Al Blades since high school, like by far. It's not even a comparison from what you compared to Tyreek Stevenson to Al Blades in high school. Um, and, and the fact that you got the other weak side linebacker uh, or middle linebacker position is Corey Flagg. So hopefully Corey Flagg can step up because we're going to need him to step up big because the run defense last year, especially against North Carolina, was abysmal. And it was mainly because of the linebacker position, I think, not getting to these running backs and putting them on the ground. So tackling is going to be key throughout this season. Um, but no huge surprises on this depth chart. Keyshawn Smith making it as the wide receiver was interesting to me as, as a third wide receiver. What about Pope uh, dropping? Was that? Pope dropping. Marcus yeah, Pope. Pope drops, you know, D. Wiggins, uh, you know, not even being considered for that third spot. I, don't, I think the fourth spot is going to X-Men, uh, Xavier Strepo. Um, so Wiggins is probably fifth. On the, on the depth chart, and then you got, and he's battling with the freshman. And I think the, the freshman that came in is probably better than them. They just, you know, not really talking too much about that because the, the freshman that's in there, Brinson, 
uh, Smith and Jacoby George, those those receivers are, I think, are going to end up leaping over um, Pope and Wiggins when, once we get down to, to the season. I don't mind. I mean, you said that you kind of didn't like the the big games for the, being the first game. Me, I kind of disagree. I kind of like it. You feel me? It kind of could show us because we're not where we need to be. We're not the, the the powerhouse that we once were. We're getting there. You know, again, like I said, you have certain people, five stars, four stars, that's deciding to stay in University of Miami rather than leaving. But again, when we played Florida, it was close until the end. When we played LSU, it was not. Was it? Was it a blowout? It was a blowout. Oh, okay, okay. So <laughs> LSU was a blowout. All right, that was, I think the first game. Um, yeah. The next year was um, Florida. It was a close game until the end, you know. And that was sign. Yeah. And that was when Florida had, you know, they were looking good. You know, they had Kyle Pitts and you know on that team, and he was balling. Also, I can't. I think kind of he was the one of the reasons why we actually lost that game. Him and that, that yeah, quarterback. And, and the running back Rainey, who actually is in the NFL right now. Exactly. So, so just the plain fact that we can go ahead and gauge where we at, you know, because again, you know, these, these programs are on the up and we're not, you know, we're look like we're going on the up, but then we have situations like Mark Pope and D Wiggins dropping balls and our blades getting burned and, you know, certain things like that. So just the plain fact that we could go ahead and play these top schools as far as, you know, if they're top 10, top 15, if we could play them first, it kind of could give us an idea where we need to be. You feel me? Because, yeah, y'all yeah, looking good in training camp and, you know, um, like we, we, we think that we're back and then you get punched in the mouth and then you see that you're not nowhere where you need to be. You know what I'm saying? So just to be able to play Alabama first, and just to play, we could play Alabama. And if we lose to Alabama, how, how far we're going to drop? We're not gonna drop too too far if if we look okay. You know what I mean? If we if we just get roasted, get destroyed, then of course we're probably not gonna be top twenty five no more. But I don't mind taking that 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 loss. We're fourteen right now. We lose to Ab- Alabama, which I think we're gonna win. Um, we could drop to like maybe twenty. We could wait, drop wait, to twenty two. Wait, wait, wait! You can't just say that and just keep it moving. Like, <laughs> no, no, no! I'm not saying. I think we're gonna win, but I'm saying if we was to lose. Like why? I, I need to know why you think we're going to win, brother. Like, tell me why. I think we're going to win because their quarterback is a rookie. Um, again, I know he's a five star. They're surrounded by five stars. Their backups are five stars or four stars or whatnot. But I really think that they um, aren't in sync, you know, like that. It's kind of like you see, because I look at Nick Saban like Bill Belichick of college football. So um last year big belichick didn't do so good because he had a a, not a rookie quarterback but somebody that was not in the system that long mac jones is in the nfl right now you know he took all the reps when he were in alabama now you're coming i think you threw the ball like maybe 20 times your whole career in alabama so that's what i'm hoping for i'm hoping for manny diaz to be the one that's that's calling the plays now to just do what you need to do early on in the game, rush this guy and put some foots on his ass and and have him second guessing himself because, but then again, here goes the problem. Our DNs, they're in the NFL right now. And the guy that used to play linebacker that's playing the end right now, yeah, you're bigger. Yeah, you're older, but you look like you probably uh, Alabama player, you feel me? Because Alabama players all are big, you know, freshmen are big, you know, juniors are big, you know, sophomores, seniors, all of them come in huge. So, so now you're probably just going to go against somebody that's your size, you know, <laughs> or somebody that can still hold it down. So yeah, you change your position to better yourself, to try to make it to the league, because again, you got a lot of teams that probably wasn't looking at you anyway. Um, I don't really I really think that Manny Diaz is going to go ahead and do his thing on the defensive side of the ball early on. Early on. Now again, if they if they go ahead and have them do a North Carolina on us with the rushing game over 500 yard rushing, it still kind of haunts me right now like 500 yards. You remember that game, right? Last year, with 500 yards rushing. Yeah. 
I think it was yeah. 550. Yeah, it was crazy. I'm trying to forget it. I'm trying to forget <laughs> that. I mean, because it was that terrible. It was, it was yeah. one of the worst games I've ever seen the Hurricanes play, period. Exactly. Was, was 62. They, they let them score 60 points on us. That's crazy. And then, and then wasn't Alabama. They wasn't Clemson. They wasn't Ohio State. You know, like, come on, man. It's, that, that's ridiculous. So just the plain fact that you had that team, like Marcus said, it's not an Alabama. It's not the Ohio State. So it ain't none of these teams. And they wind up doing that to us. Late in the year last year, you don't think that 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 Nick Saban been seen that? You don't think Nick Saban is gonna go ahead and try to run the ball early? I got a rookie quarterback right now, um, and and he's he's probably a deer in you know caught in headlights right now. Even though he has the talent, you know, um, we still have the name, the University of Miami. Everybody knows yeah. about the U. Everybody knows that majority of the talent that's on your team is coming from Miami. You know, majority of the people that in, in Alabama, even though they are on Alabama, you know, in their heart, they still you University of Miami fans. Like, I'm just being real. You're from Alabama because you got to go to school there. But you know, you from Dade County. Anybody from Dade County is out of you. Love FSU, love Florida, or love the University of Miami. So... Yeah. I, I, they're not going to try to destroy us, you know, because their heart is still in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> their heart is still in Miami. So for me, um, I, like, again, you know, I'm loyal over here. Again, sometimes my loyalty may blind me. Um, but I really, yeah, yeah. I really yeah. do think, like, this is the time, like, we can actually win the game. We, we can win the game. I know it's going to be hard. If we do win it, I think we're going to win by three points, you know. But if we lose... You know, it won't be a big shock to me, but just keep it close and 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 it'll still be a win for me. Yeah. I mean, to me, this is all about Manny Diaz, bro. Like Manny Diaz, prove to me, prove to the hurricane faithful that you are the guy forever. Like, not forever, you know, obviously sometimes they get deals or whatever, but like for now, you like, going nowhere. Are the solidified guy because you're taking over the defensive calls right now and you have a rookie quarterback or a freshman quarterback playing his first game like you should be able to scheme against this this dude who is playing in it not in just like he's not playing at home so it's not like it, it's a total like you know like he's going to be comfortable in the, in this environment he's in a, in a in a big uh nationally televised game uh first saturday of the season you're not at home, so you still had to travel to Atlanta just like how we did. So it's it's going to be a different feel for him to to just start his first game ever against an unexper- pretty much an experienced defense, and we're going to score points. I I'm pretty I am pretty confident that Miami is going to score points. So you're going to have to score with us. So it's not like you could just depend on that defense the entire game. You're going, you're going to have to make plays. You're going to have to take care of the football. We'll see what the turnover, the new turn, hopefully we see the new turnover, turnover chain this season. Uh, well, in this game, hopefully we see that several times because I think we're going to need turnovers to win. And yeah, man, that, that, uh, that defense, this defensive performance will basically define Manny Diaz at least for now because this is the perfect opportunity and I'm not saying they have no chance I I think they have a really great chance the fact that you got an experienced quarterback you got a pretty experienced defense you got the best old line you've had in years you know you got skilled um, players at every position receiver tight end you have plays running back you have potential players that will be at least considered to be in the NFL. Cameron Harris, if he has a good season, I, I would think he's going to be like a six or seven round pick. Will Mallory, the tight end, if he has a great season, I think he's going to be maybe a third, second round pick to me, to be honest. Uh, some some players on the offensive line, Zion Nelson, um, Navon Donaldson, I think those two players will be able to get drafted as well. So you've got NFL type of players on this team that that should be able to score on a relatively inexperienced Alabama team. If there's any t- any time for us to beat Alabama, it's now. And there's so many reasons to hate Alabama. I, I just want to point out 
they were one of the last schools to, to integrate, but integration, I mean, that that's a whole nother different story for a different day. But still, for the fact that you were the, one of the last teams to do it, and you already touched on the Dolphins aspect of it. And then the other thing is that they, the last two games we played against them were championship type of games. Like in 90, 92, Alabama ended up beating us. We were supposed to be going for back-to-back -back that year, 91, then 92. They ended up blowing us out. I'm not going to lie to you. That was a game I was watching as a little boy, <laughs> and I cried, bro. I well, cried. Y'all didn't watch that shit. It was sad as hell, and I was, I was like, that's when, like, that's when I realized how much it meant to me <laughs> as a kid because at 12, at uh, I was, I was 10, I was 10 years old, you know, and I was like, damn, that thing, that thing hurt my heart, and and then we beat them in '89, and that's when we won that championship, and that was kind of like the first year I actually really started to watch every game. Uh, in my life you know I really started that early <laughs> but um but yeah so you got those that historical context to it and you also said that everybody knows Miami believe it or not in that story that I wrote posted yesterday I'm about, I'm gonna post it to Instagram today is that Miami and Alabama are the two most successful teams when it comes to championships since integration so since we got integrated, since we've been basically on a level playing field now, if you feel what I'm talking about, we, the Hurricanes, have won five championships. Alabama has won nine. No other team has won more. I just want to point that out. <laughs> no other team has won more championships than Miami or Alabama. We're talking about AP national championships than Alabama and Miami. So we are still should be at the top, you know, because as far as this modern, I would say modern era of college football, I mean, before the seventies, you know, you could throw all of that out of the window because they were giving championships to teams just because they liked them, you know, because they'd be, teams that'd be going undefeated and they wouldn't even be considered um for the national championship so now we got a playoff possibly expansion to the playoff there's no reason there's no excuses of who uh or um of who of who the real champion is so you let, let's um since we talked a lot about the hurricanes what what's what's your prediction i mean obviously that you know once people see this, they might see it during the game, after the game. But, you know, what, what's your prediction on this game, score-wise? My, my prediction is a University of Miami win. <laughs> a University of Miami win. You know, I don't mean, I mind being wrong, you know, but um, I think it's going to be like, let's say, 35. 30. No man's favor thing is really like that defense because for like what you said, this this is the O-line, the best O-line we had in years. Imagine saying this is the best O-line we had in years, and they know that too, right? And the O-line can't generate no push. The O-line can't do anything against Alabama. That will speak volumes on oh, how far we are, you know what I mean? Because, you know, you need that O-line. You need to keep Derek um, upright. He can't be running for his life, even, even though he know how to scramble. And, and, and you know, our running backs, y'all need to find a way to cut through these gaps. You feel I me? Mean? I don't like, you know, when you're running from the defense. I want you to run at them and be like, oh, I'm hitting you right in the gut. And you can't stop me because my O-line is on point. If we always got to run, you know, like do a toss play or – it's like trickery running. No, I, li I like really going towards you, you know, right up the gut, you know. And, and if we could do that consistently, then, you know, me with, with, with my score, I really feel like we're going to actually do our thing. Because I know that the air can actually pass. We actually got people now that can actually catch the damn ball and not drop it and look around like, oh, man. No, you know, we got people that can actually keep the ball in their possession and, and do things after the catch. So. 
Hopefully that's the case. What's your position on, on position? I on mean, that? I'm gonna do something that that is probably not uh, uh, legal when it comes to picking games, but I'm gonna I'm gonna pick uh, a winner, a, win, uh, a winning score for the Hurricanes and a winning score for the Alabama. Okay, <laughs> but it's gonna be, go. the, but it's gonna be the same score. I think it's gonna be a lower scoring game because it's the first game, and I think you know Alabama is not gonna be scoring a lot. And I think, you know, Miami is probably not going to be scoring a lot on that defense. That defense is legit. That defense is not young, by the way. It is pretty much very experienced, especially in linebackers, you know, um, and they got a solid corner again. Josh Joby who's going to be another one of those Alabama corners that makes it to the league. Uh, so I think it's going to be more of a low scoring game. It's going to be come down to turnovers. If we, you know, generate some turnovers, it'll be a critical factor, but I think it's going to be like a 24 17 uh, type of game. And I can see the Canes winning with that score. And I can see the Canes losing uh, to that same score. Either way, I would probably be, be happy. Uh, well, not of course with the Hurricanes winning, I'm, I'm going to be exploding, <laughs> you know, but, um, but yeah, if, if, if Alabama ends up beating us 24 17, I'll be happy with that. But another thing I want to talk about, unless you got something else on that game, um, on the on the D line, you know, um, when it's when it, in regards to the running, stopping the run, like yo, the reason why the Hurricanes always seem like they're out of place and getting caught lacking with the run game is because the linebackers don't wait. Your D line is supposed to hold them upright, and then you're supposed to wait to see where to where he's gonna be running in the gap. It's like before you figure out what gap the running back is running through, you're running in another gap. And then now it's just the safeties <laughs> is the safeties and, and the running back. And if you, if you dodge one of the safeties or it's a missed tackle or anything like that, like, you know, that, that it's, it's just lights out It's game over right there. So me personally, if they can actually like contain themselves, and I know Manny Diaz, he's an aggressive guy, you know, um, so, kind of fall back a little bit when it comes to your linebackers. You know, you could be aggressive with everyone else if you know you're blitzing. But, you know, if you know that you're not blitzing and, and you're kind of linebackers are seeing and seeing what they can actually do, then then you can, you know, hold it down. And not just that. You don't need to worry about he's not a running quarterback. You know, Matt, um, that guy is not – is he a running quarterback? That He, he is mobile, yeah. He's a dual um, threat. Like, come on, man. That's just <laughs> like, like hearing uh, um, when Xavier Howard heard that um, Cam Newton ain't playing no more. Uh, he was like, ah, you know, it's just business, you know. Nah, nah, I can yeah. That's funny because that's exactly the topic I wanted to go into. This whole Cam Newton thing. Um, and